Yeah, I got this uh, got this Bosch 2000 HP AXT shredder. Um, had it for about 10 years. It's probably had about, in total, I'd say 10 hours of actual stuffing branches down the hill. In there is a what looks like a meat grinder. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I think it can take branches up to that kind of diameter, fresh cut wood, and then leaves and everything else go down there. It's quite a small opening and it's a devil to unjam it, but on balance, I suppose, for the 150 quid or whatever it was, it's not bad. It's not great either. But look, it's got <laughs> this weird label. Uh, Unbuilt Siphon. Uh, eco label. Something award. And the jury of ecology or something in Germany. So it's got a nice sticker which they thought, I don't know what's eco about it, maybe. Look in there, you can put antlers in as well. Look, see, you can see put deer's antlers in, typical Germans, down in the Schinnerwald. Um, yeah, so this one, I've stripped, I take it apart once before because it got totally jammed. Someone stuffed a quite a hard dry stick down there and it just wouldn't, wouldn't shoot. It just goes and then cuts out. But now what happens is um, it jammed up again the other day, but I noticed that um, it wasn't starting. But when I took it apart, it wasn't actually jammed. And what happens now is when you turn it on, you just listen. It's just jammed, it, but there's no actual the rotor, the, the, the uh, grinder part, the part that does chops up all the sticks isn't stuck. It's um, it's just not going round. And what happened before was that uh, I thought I was going mad because what happens is you normally turn this on and if you jam it up, you, switch, you quickly switch it off, change the direction and then turn it on and it comes starts backwards and shoves out whatever got jammed in there in the first place that was causing the blockage. But I noticed that it was starting up and stopping okay, but it wasn't always going in the right direction. This switch seemed to have no effect whatsoever and it seemed almost random whether it started in the downwards or upwards uh, position. So that coupled with low starting torque, which I think is the problem now, there's not enough torque to get the thing moving. I think it's stuck on a pole on the motor. And so I think there's something wrong with the starting circuit. So we're just gonna take it apart now and have a look inside and see if we can see whether a wire has dropped off or whether the switch isn't working properly or whether the, um, the starting capacitor on the motor, single phase obviously, has gone, but we're right in the middle of the lockdown in 2020 and the garden rubbish is piling up and the, the shredder has packed up. So yeah, let's take it apart and see what's wrong. The side of this thing, look, well, this is the frame that comes, it's even got the, uh, still got the original production wrapping on it. Uh, comes up here and it's bolted on these two bolts and you can adjust the height. And if you set it up higher, it's actually better because you've got more room under the chute to get a bucket or something in. Because that's where the uh, mulched and chopped up vegetation comes out. But it does build up quite quickly and starts to feed back up the tubes. You have to keep constantly moving it. So it would be nice if this came out somewhere else or a bit higher up, but you can get a shallow tray underneath and you know, just to keep frequently just keep emptying it all the time. So I'm going to take out these four bolts. There's two on this side, two on the other side, take the stand off. Right, so there she is. We've got the control panel cover here. Um, it's in two halves, so there's two clamshells, a left and a right clamshell here, split line along all the way down there and all the way along the back. So we've got to take out these screws, this screw, this screw, this screw, this one, three screws here, screw there, and the screws on both sides of this cover, uh, some down the end here as well, and then I think I'm going to have to remove this top hat, entry cowling, okay, so there's one, two, three, uh, and three on the other side, so there's six screws holding this on, so this, I'm going to take all these screws out and then we'll take her apart, see how we get on. Bolts are all out, there's 17 T20 screws, that's these. 17 of those. If you haven't got 17, then you may have one still stuck in. There's these four M10 long 10mm head M6 long bolts with the curved washers for the stand. And then there's two e extra bolts here more mounted, mounted onto the motor housing on the inside. And they're 
M5, but they've got a T25 head. So the T20 head will take them out, but you should really use a 225 if they're tight, because the T20 might round off, okay? So that's nuts and bolts. So they're all in the tray, look after them, and then we'll come back to that later when we come to put it back together. So turning our attention back to this again, um, this is kind of stuck on at the moment. I've got all the screws out that I can see on both sides. There's some around here as well, down this side. Here and here. Nothing showing around here. Uh, no, so I'm assuming that's just clipped in. So let's just try levering it gently and see if it comes off. I can't quite remember. It was years ago since I had this part. No, it's not going that way. I don't think you have to take the knobs off, do you? Not take the bloody knobs off. Let me have a quick look and I'll come back to you when I've worked it out. Yeah, okay, what we've got here is a series of clips under here as well as these screws, there's clips under there. And if I just turn it round, can I do this one-handed? I should get myself a tripod, shouldn't I? It's not enough being just a human tripod. Let me just turn it round. Yeah, the name of the game is just to put a screwdriver underneath this edge. And lever it up. I can't get a purchase. Let's see if I can do this. So that levered it. A bit difficult holding the camera. And there we have the gubbins inside. So let's turn it over and have a look at what's in there. Got in there is a the on-off switch here, which is just basically an on-off switch and a direction change switch, which changes the direction of the windings on the motor so that it will start up in the opposite direction. And also here we've got a capacitor. I'll pull that out in a moment. 20, 20 microfarad capacitor basically. You've got two wires on, it's a straight cap. Now I don't know much about these capacitors but I d <laughs> it seems to have a lot of funk streaming out. You can see this uh, ribbon of something sticking out. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be come out the side of the capacitor in an eruption. You can see the eruption down there. Can you see that? This part down here. I'll get it out and <laughs> You can have a look at it, but it looks like what's wrong with it, doesn't it? It's that capacitor has gone. One moment. Anyway, this one's not particularly difficult to uh, diagnose because there's a. I'm sure that stream of. Right, let's break that off. This uh, material, whatever that is, it's like a. Feels like foam plastic, but its side of the capacitor has exploded, and it's pushed out this stream of funk out, and obviously it's no good now. So I don't think it's a cap anymore. So I'm thinking that's what the problem is. That's why it won't start. That's why it's got low. When it's running, it's fine, but a very low starting torque. And this capacitor is switched in when the motor starts by a switch inside the motor and switched out when the motor is running. It's to, otherwise, without it, you get no, virtually no starting torque at all, which is what we seem to have. So 420 volt AC. So it's good rating. You know, it's surprised it's blown up, but it doesn't say it's probably Italian. I should think. Yeah, so I need a new one of those. And then we'll take the rest of it apart and have a look at the, uh, the gears and things just to make sure they're all okay. Okay, so actually I'm just in the middle of refurbishing my workshop as you can see. And these lights are fluorescent. I bought some new LED ones, so these are now obsolete. And looking around for a starter motor capacitor, the nearest one I've got is 50 microfarad for my compressor, which is no good. But in those lights are these, which are, if you can read that. Read that. Anyway, they're, they're 8.4 microfarad, 250 volt AC. The other ones were 400 AC, but the one I took out, but obviously it's blown up, so that's meaningless. And these run happily in the light, so I'm going to put two of these in parallel. 8.4 times plus 8.4 is 16.8, uh, which is close enough to 20 for jazz. They've got nice connectors on top, so I'm just going to wire them in, in there, and strap them down, and see if it works or not. Free capacitors from a scrap fluorescent light fitting. Okay, the two caps have been strapped together. I've put some male spade terminals on the end, you can see those. And obviously it won't fit into the existing screw threaded uh, base, but I'm going to fit it in somewhere there, I think. I was going to check that it will clear and then plug it in and then we'll give it a go, shall we? 
Um, so I've got to mount these two inside the case. I was going to put some holes through and put some tie wraps in. So I'll just do that and then we'll come back and test it. So there they are. I've, I've driven a hole in the casing here and round the other side and strapped those in so they're nicely strapped in. They're not going anywhere. And I'm just going to plug the wires in. Because they are just ordinary, unbiased or unpolarised capacitors, it doesn't matter which way around the wires go. So I'll just plug that in and we'll give it a go. Here we go for the moment of truth. And we'll go in the normal downwards direction and turn on. So that's fixed it. Yeah, making a different noise going backwards. Yeah, so it was just the capacitor, nothing too complicated actually. So you can see I connect, I plug the plugs in, I put some tape and also tie wraps around to keep them sturdy and the uh, capacitors are strapped down so it's just a reverse process of putting it back together um, so yeah I hope you enjoy that I'll just fix it and we'll have a quick shred with it and then we'll be done yeah I thought I'd just show you what's inside them um, just in case yours is jammed and it's not the capacitor that's gone is there's this inside when you take this cover off the actual control cover there are three more screws one two three more screws and then this whole clamshell will then lift off revealing the motor gearbox assembly and what you've got <coughs> in there is the motor. If I turn it around slightly, you should be able to see it a bit better. Um, and this is a screw-on fan, but you can turn it that direction. And when it was jammed before, I just turned this by hand. It was quite stiff and it just fed, it just had a bit more torque than starting torque in the motor. And it fed the plug of material that was jamming it out. And I've done that a couple of times to free it off when the reverse switch wouldn't free. Also, um, I noticed as well that I had it jammed once where someone fed some really dry wood inside and I couldn't be bothered to take it apart and it just would not budge so I just poured some engine oil down the input which went into here and loosened it up and the next time I tried it it managed to dislodge it and you can see in here uh, if I turn this I can't actually turn it at the moment you can see this turns and in there is like a, an Archimedes screw type arrangement uh, a bit like a mincer actually, a meat mincer, and it screws in this direction and pulls the the detritus through and then flips it out with this uh, this bar here. So mechanically it's okay, so I'm just going to put it back together now. Okay. Another tip for putting this back together is obviously make sure the wires come out through the, when you put the clamshell back on, make sure the wires come out correctly through the uh, appointed aperture with the strain relief on them. Um, and you can see you can put all these screws back in, these three first obviously, but before you do, just make sure, because I've done this a couple of times, put all the screws back in and found the lid won't go back on. So just offer up that lid to make sure it's sitting properly. If this is slightly out of alignment, then the lid will not go on and you will have to take all the screws out, undo it and then resettle the unit inside. It kind of gets off an angle somehow. But just check that that goes back on before you um, before you put the lid on. Before you put the rest of the screws in, try the lid first. And then screw, and then put the lid back, and you'll be okay.